Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, for this video, I'm actually going to review a Dragon Gate show. This will be the final Dragon Gate show from 2010. Uh, I'll get into why I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. But uh, really quickly, I just want to send my best wishes to everyone out in Japan. Uh, just an unfortunate situation. I mean, uh, I'm sure you guys have seen the news already. Uh, a tsunami, earthquake, whatever you want to call it, uh, hit Japan. Probably the worst uh, earthquake that Japan has had since the 1800s. That's what it's being reported. Uh, it actually was an 8.9 on the Richter scale, and about two to 300 people have died already. So yeah, this really sucks. It, it looks like this is really going to hurt the economy in Japan. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see how this affects some of the Japanese wrestling promotions that we follow. But uh, yeah, j just want to wish everybody the best out there. Hopefully, uh, you know, that not too many people are found dead after what was already reported. And um, yeah, I mean, the good thing about this is that, you know, Jap Japan actually... Uh, they do a great job. Supposedly, they do a great job in prepare as far as the preparation process for earthquakes. So, um, but I, I I just hope like not too many people die out of this. So yeah. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Hopefully, everything is all right. So uh, yeah, let's just uh, switch from one topic to the next. Let's get right into the uh, Dragon Gate uh, 2010, the final gate show. All right, so let's get into this review. This is uh, Dragon Gate's uh, Final Gate 2010. Um, you know, uh, there's not a lot of buzz for this show. I just want to bring some attention to it. I think it's a very, very solid show. Um, if you guys could try to find a way to download this on a torrent, uh, it's definitely worth a look. Um, you could actually buy the IVP videos for $5.99, which I, I think is a pretty good deal. But with the shipping, you probably have to spend like maybe 12 13 bucks. So that kind of sucks. But... Um, yeah, uh, but before getting into this, let me just say there's actually a Dragon Gate USA pay-per-view tonight. I think it's called United We Stand. It's supposed to be this is probably going to be the show of the year so far, and um, really would uh, recommend checking it out. Just just from the live reports, uh, it's supposed to be an awesome, awesome show. Uh, Akira Tozawa versus BB Hulk. It's supposed to be uh, one of the best matches of the year so far. So if you can find a way to check out the Dragon Gate USA pay-per-view, definitely uh, check it out. It should be great. Uh, but yeah. Uh, as far as this show goes, um, you know, I actually got this show from IVPvideos.com, uh, The Final Gate 2010. Now, I, I know a lot of people have, uh, some people have talked about it already. I think the only person that reviewed it was Honor Hammer. He, he talked about, like, the last three or four matches. Uh, but actually, um, you could you could buy this from IVP Videos. Uh, I got it for $5.99. I just, I just want to thank IVP Videos for uh, sending me this uh disc they they did a really great job as far as the customer service goes now they actually sent me the wrong uh noah show i actually bought the um the noah show where kenta and ioki defeated edwards and roderick strong in the main event of the ta junior tag team title uh finals and uh you know they, they sent me a copy of, of a noah show I already had so i said oh I, I, you're sending out the wrong copies you should definitely check the master uh, copy for uh, you know the show that you're sending out and and I, it appeared that I was right and they they screwed up and they said they I could have any show I want and at the same time they sent they did send me the actual Noah show that I bought and I, I requested them to send me this uh, this Dragon Gate show uh, the final gate so uh, I just want to thank IVP Videos you know great customer service there so you can buy this for five dollars and ninety nine cents from the IVPvideos.com website uh, it's it's not that great of a deal if if I were you I would just try to you know, download download this on a torrent because with the shipping you could have to spend like twelve to thirteen bucks. It's not really, I wouldn't say it's really worth it. Um, it's a little bit too much money in my opinion. So, but uh, yeah, let's let's go right down to the show. Um, the opener. I don't want to go into depth with the opener. It, it seems like in Japanese wrestling, the the openers really really are dull in comparison to some of the you know promotions in the United States. It seems like they they purposely just you know put uh you know the the weakest talent in the opener, which I don't know. I, I guess that's the way the Japanese cards are structured. But uh, th this is okay. I, this is a lot better than your typical Noah opener. It was a tag team matchup. I uh, don't really want run run down the names uh, that were in this match because uh, I just want to move on to the next match. We have Susumu Yokosuka versus Kagatora. This one about maybe nine minutes. And uh, you know, for those that don't know Yokosuka, if you think back to the first Dragon Gate pay per view, he was in. He actually teamed up with Sima to take on the Young Bucks. That was probably the match of the night from the show. Uh, so, yeah, Yokosuka, he's been brought on the ROH a couple times, not that many times. He's uh, really, really good shape. He's got a, a pretty good look to him, actually. Uh, they they had a good match. It was very, very um, 
fast paced, but it didn't really hold my interest. It was just um, the crowd wasn't with him for anything they did, but um, it had a good finish. Just kind of a, uh, it just didn't keep my attention, but it, I, I can't deny the effort there. The effort was still good. They uh, just just a solid nine minute match. All right, so let's move on to the next match. We got a no DQ match featuring Darkness Dragon and Gamadeo. This one about twelve minutes, and uh, this felt like a big Japan match. Very very weird matchup. Uh, one of these guys, I guess it was, um, I guess it was Gamadeo. This guy wore his face paint. He's got like the Papa Shingo, you know, liquid coming out of his mouth. Just uh, a pretty unique looking character, like straight out of a comic book, but. Um, yeah, I mean, some, some pretty, uh, this is a hardcore match, you know, it, like I said, it felt like the kind of match you would see in Big Japan, kind of, uh, I, I didn't really expect this out of a, a Dragon Gate show, but, uh, it, it was pretty entertaining for what it was, I'll probably give it two and three quarter. Uh, next will be a Genki Koroguchi and Ryo Sato taking on Masaki Mochizuki and Don Fuji, and they took on Shingo and Cyberconk, so this is a three-way elimination match, this one about 21 minutes, and, um, I mean, it was, um, this is good, you know, this is like your typical, you know, Dragon Gate, you know, style tag match. Uh, what can I say about this that hasn't really been said? Um, Shingo and Cyberkong have been a pretty good team this year. They had one of the best and most underrated Dragon Gate matches of the year when they took on uh, Sema and Gamma early in the year. I know A-Stone thought that was his, like, match of the year or whatever, but... Um, th th this was okay. The this disappointing thing about this was Shingo got eliminated early. I think uh, Genki Horiguchi actually pinned Shingo, which kind of shocked the shit out of me. Uh, Mochizuki and Don Fuji, they've been teaming up a lot. A lot of people thought they had, you know, were part of Dragon Age's match of the year. They had that ultra stiff match against Yamato, and, and I think it was, was it Shingo? I think it was. But yeah, this is a very, very stiff match. A lot of stiff shots to the head from uh, Mochizuki. Um, it actually, came, I don't know, just kind of disappointed that it came down to, to Genki, Horiguchi, and Sato versus uh, Mochizuki and Don Fuji. This could have been a lot better, uh, but it was still almost great, though. It's just very, very solid action. One about, yeah, like I said, one about 20 minutes. Uh, so next up, we move on to BB Hulk versus Yamato. This was, uh, I mean, a good match. You know, they all their matches, I'm going to say all their matches are equally just as good. You know, they had the uh, that match at the uh, end of the Dragon pay-per-view. They open up the show. They put on. They have just have a lot of great chemistry. And then they also recently, uh, Yamato actually defeated BB Hulk for the Open the Freedom Gate Championship at the uh, United NYC show. But this was pretty much, you know, pretty much what you would expect. Um, you know, I, like all their matches are like three and three quarter. I would not. I would not give this four stars. But it's really, really close though. Uh, if I were to pick one, I would say this might have been their weakest match that I've seen so far because of the the crowd. I felt like the you, I feel like the U.S., there are, the other matches I've seen them have, they took place in the United States. I feel like the United States crowds were just a little bit better than this crowd, um, to tell you the truth. Um, but, you know, good action here, you know. They they kicked out of a lot of their finishers. Uh, B.B. Hulk actually hit the Phoenix Blast to get the win. Uh, the thing about this, I, I think B.B. Hulk, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I think you could argue that B.B. Hulk's been one of the, you could argue that B.B. Hulk was the weakest champion ever as far as any champion in the United States that has, that has held any championship for over a whole year. I think you could definitely make that case. I just I just think he, um, that tottering just wasn't that, you know, important to Dragon Gate USA. I just think it could have done a lot more for the company. Uh, but yeah, BB Hulk and Yamato, still a good match. This is probably the third best match on the show. Uh, so next up we had Yasushi Kanda, Naoka Tanazaki, Takuya Sugawara taking on Sima. Dragon Kid and Ricochet. Um, I'm not going to say this is the match of the night, but it was very, very good. This is probably the most entertaining stuff you will see on the show. A lot of it has to do with Ricochet. Ricochet, once again, just, uh, you know, stole the show as far as his athleticism goes. He just, this was just a nice showcase for him. Once again, it seems like Sima has like a hard on for Ricochet. He really, you know, is going out of his way just to make sure, you know, people are recognizing this guy's talent. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not familiar with the other three guys in this match, Kanda, T Tanizaki, or Sugawara. I haven't seen a lot of them. Uh, obviously, those guys have never, you know, come to the United States, to my knowledge. But they, they look good here. This is a, a nice, fast-paced tag match, you know, just great action. Brody Lee actually got involved. And, uh, you know, there was, there was interference, but it didn't take away from the match. It had a great crowd. As far as crowd reaction goes, this is, this is the best match of the night. 
and uh you know just ricochet pulled off some insane things here and uh like i said very very fast paced just uh you know just great action a solid four star match uh next up move on to the open the dream gate match we have the champion masato yoshino taking on naruki doi uh this this is my personal match of the night still could have been a lot better this this wasn't like one of the best dragon gate matches of the year uh, i felt like uh, yoshino and yamato when yoshino won the belt when the open the dream gate championship was probably uh, a lot better than this but but this is still great though i like the story of this match you know yoshino and doi have uh in the past they used to team up together as speed muscle even in ring of honor so uh th they've been pretty you know synonymous with each other and, and to see them finally have a match this is the first time i've ever i've ever seen them wrestle i think they had a match in 2009 which uh, that was actually clipped on the first disc of this uh show uh which which looked like a great match but this this was still great though I mean, uh, I'm very, very high on Yoshino, as a lot of you guys know. I think you could, uh, I think without that, Yoshino's the best athlete in professional wrestling. And I think you can make a case that Masato Yoshino is one of the, as far as just pure athleticism goes, I think you could argue he's one of the best 10 athletes in the, in professional sports right now. I'm, I'm not going to say the world, but uh, as far as, I mean, I, I can't tell you if there's any football players or, you know, uh, MMA guys that are more athletic than Yoshino. I'm really not sure. I don't, I don't want to jump to that conclusion. But I, I would say in the NBA, I think there's only maybe about five to ten people in the league that you could argue are a better athlete than Yoshino. I think I think Blake Griffin, LeBron, uh, maybe Russell Westbrook, maybe John Wall, and uh, maybe Derrick Rose. But I, I would say Yoshino is a better athlete than Kobe and even Wade. So that, that's as far as his pure athleticism goes. I just think he's that good. But yeah, this is a great match. These two finally going at it. The first half of the match was kind of it kind of took a while to get going, but um, you know the story of the match is Naruki Doi had the Salisiente scouted, so you know that that's a submission move that Yoshino uses. So there there was great counters to that. Uh, Yoshino actually worked over Doi's arm a lot during the match. It was some good selling from Doi. Just a lot of fast paced action towards the end. Uh, the finish was awesome. I spied off the top rope. Yoshino actually retained, obviously. And, uh, you know, j just a solid match. I'm going to give it four and a quarter stars. It, 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 I think it had potential to reach like a four and a half, four and three quarter level if they just had more of a crowd to play off. I thought the crowd was kind of burnt a little bit towards the end. So that's just me. So, uh, yeah, that, that's the overall uh, show. I'm going to give the show about maybe an 8.5. I think 8.5 is a fair score. I'll check the star ratings to see the official DVD score because I'm not quite sure yet. But, uh, yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it. As far as ROH goes, I haven't gotten around to seeing the new shows yet. Only The Strong Survive and uh, Champions vs. All-Stars. Um, however, though, there's a lot of great reviews on YouTube so far. You know, I think Big Rat, Honor ha no, 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 Big Rat, uh, Trademark, LV, and um, Sean Carlton Zero all did uh, great reviews of the show. So uh, that's great. I think it's awesome that a lot of people are, you know, giving attention to... Uh, these new ROH shows that are coming out, but I'll, I'll pick them up at the Manhattan Mayhem 4 show, and I'll probably have a, a huge review video coming up with, uh, you know, PWG Sinai, Kurt WrestleMania 2, and, uh, you know, the, the new ROH shows all together, and that would be like for one video, so uh, that's pretty much it, yeah, so uh, definitely check out this show, I, like like I said, I, I know I know this show, a lot of you uh, Japanese wrestling e experts and people that follow indie wrestling, this is kind of late, this is kind of old, but I just thought I would, uh, you know, bring some more attention to this show for people that haven't seen it yet because I, I, I thought it was pretty good. It really, it really, even before I bought the show, I really had my eye on it. It just looked, it just looked like an awesome card to me, and it, it definitely you get some great wrestling here. So uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and once again, uh, best wishes to everyone out in Japan. Hopefully, everyone recovers from this uh, uh, tragedy as, as quickly as possible.